Well, here's something new and interesting that I've been studying lately. It's a new device uh, that Dr. Stiffler's been posting videos on. He's posted four videos on it. And he's calling it the Quantum Energy Receiver. Um, if you put that title in the uh, YouTube search bar, you'll be able to see his videos. And it's extremely simple. It's just a stack of neo-magnets on either side of a capacitor goes into a switching diode bridge rectifier made up of these 1N4148 diodes. That rectifies the AC signal, takes it out to electrolytic capacitor, a small one. And then uh, he's showing uh, voltages on it. And this is uh, not my replication, but this is just something that I wanted to show in my study of that device. And this is a laser saber easy spin motor that I have that device, my rendition of the device, hooked to. And that shows the voltage that's uh, on that. That's 3.3 volts while it's being powered. And that looks really, really great. This is what I would hope it would have worked out. But the thing is, it doesn't work for me. This is powered by a SLIR exciter. And that's what's doing the work right there. The energy is coming out of that batter, battery. It's, it's going into this electrostatic device. It's being coupled through capacitance to here. And that makes the motor go. Now, why I'm so interested in this is because of the performance of that coupled to that exceeds a regular AV plug. Because what's happening here is you've got a full bridge rectifier instead of a half bridge on an AV plug. Plus you've got this thing here acting like an antenna. And like I say, I'm rather impressed by the uh, performance that that is doing. Now if I touch the battery and make myself the antenna, watch what happens. Look at the speed of the motor. And that's why I'm interested in this. Um, I have not been able to replicate... Uh, let me turn this off. When I turn it off, the uh, magic goes away, and this just winds down like you would expect it to wind right down. And if I stop this completely, and then I put this uh, in a short here, short this out, of course the capacitor goes to zero. But if I change the scale down here, you'll see a rebound. And I thought that was rather interesting. And I imagine that's dielectric absorption and that electrolytic capacitor. But I still thought that was rather interesting. And the other thing was, let me put this back up on the high scale. If I just spin this with my finger, with the exciter turned off, this is turned off now, and I spin this up, watch this. And that's just running on inertia energy. But uh, it was an interesting effect, so I thought I would show that also. But anyway, um, this is what I'm studying right now. And this is not a replication. This is just something that I put together with the parts that I had to study this. Now, the one that he is showing in his latest, latest video calls for a 2,200 2, picofarad 15 kV cap. And all I had on hand was a 560 picofarad 2.5 kV cap. Uh, the diodes are correct. The uh, receiving uh, storage capacitor is correct. Um, my stack of magnets is much, much smaller than his. But uh, I, I should have seen some effect. And I'm really not. I'm, I'm not seeing the, uh, the magic. Uh, if, I, if I take this all apart and touch it, then I become an antenna and it does charge up. But um, he has cautioned in his last video, if you're going to study this, you can't have anything like this in the area. You can't have fluorescence. You can't have any sort of a signal, uh, smog, electronic smog in your environment. Otherwise, it's going to throw your readings off. And um, you can see this thing dancing around right now.
If I touch this, this might even go up. And this is where, uh, if you're going to study this uh, this thing, you've got to have the right lab environment to see uh, any kind of true results. But anyway, I thought I would share that with the guys that are studying this new uh, device. And uh, it's interesting. Thanks for watching.